if you look at the trend in the desktop space, a lot of people say, you know, desktop is dying, but I am, I produce, create work. I, I need a very powerful desktop, actually. So for me, desktop will never die. And that is true for a lot of, we live in a world where people are creating VR content, you know? Okay, yeah. you're, you can consume it on the iPad, but where are you going to create it? You still need a powerful right. machine. And then, you know, uh, uh, like Microsoft is doing excellent job with that, but they're also moving a lot of Windows. Is not, you can run Windows in cloud now. Right. So I see a future where desktop will become even more critical. Yeah. And that might create an opportunity for Linux because, you know, those vendors can actually deep dive into the kernel level. And so do you still see a hope for desktop, Linux on desktop? Um, I do. I think that, uh, I think that, um, um, for the moment, that that audience is an engineering audience, right? And so, um, uh, uh, it's an it's an audience that I'm very passionate about, which is why we invest in it. We also do a lot of work with people like Dell, for example, to make sure that it works really well out of the box on on their hardware. Um, the the um, the slight difficulty there is that engineers also like to change things and they also they also have opinions and they don't want the same thing as everybody else, right? So it doesn't help too much if I push really hard to say this is the best desktop because then people say, oh, but it's not the best desktop for me, right? Yeah. So I learned that lesson from the Unity days. You know, I thought we were doing really beautiful work, really good work, but people didn't like having that pushed on them. So now my, my thinking is let's support, let's support the GNOME environment, let's support the KDE environment, let's support the Mate environment. That gives developers freedom to choose all of those things, right? And it's also allowed us to kind of really grow our depth on the server, really grow our depth on the cloud, really grow our, our story for IoT. Uh, when I was talking to Linus, you know, a few weeks, months ago, and he was like, one of the problems with the desktop is fragmentation. Do you, I don't want to create any controversy, you know, but do you think, you know, Linux on desktop might have succeeded? It, it was treated as one platform, so companies could just, the way that they look at Mac, you know, they have to just spin one DMG file for Windows EXE file, you know, of course you are doing something with Snap, but then we have Flatpak, we have, you know, App Image, so once again, there is a fragmentation there. So, so I'm just asking a hypothetical, uh, philosophical question that Linux might have succeeded if it was treated as just one platform, so companies were looking at Linux as one platform, not 20,000 distros. I think that I think that is possibly true, but the only way you would really achieve that is if you had made Linux so that legally only one person could make it, and then it wouldn't be Linux, right? Um, I think I think the the, the bigger challenge has been um, that we haven't invented anything in the Linux desktop that was like deeply powerfully ahead of its time, right? Um, I love what the Chrome OS guys do, right? Because essentially there was a, a very futuristic vision there of the desktop as, as an extension of the web, right? Um, and so they deserve essentially their success because they were willing to go and create something that didn't exist. In a world where for most people the desktop looks like Windows, right? If, 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 if in the, the free software community, we only allow ourselves to talk about things that look like something that already exists, then we're sort of defining ourselves yeah, as exactly. a series of forks and fragmentations, right? This was something I found very difficult in, in Unity because I thought we, we did articulate a vision of convergence and I believe it's gonna happen, you know? I think iOS and MacOS will converge. We were 10 years ahead yeah, of that, yeah. right? But the community wouldn't let us do it, which is kind of crazy. I know. Right? I remember those days, you know, because I held the prototype of Ubuntu phone and I also got the demo of Ubuntu TV. I remember it was Mobile World Congress. Those were like exciting days, you know, a lot of exactly. work was, yeah. Now, to be clear, we failed and we failed for lots of reasons. Many of them, it, it, many yeah. of them our own mistakes yeah. and so on. But I do think it's interesting mm -hmm. that, that, that the, 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 the desktop community became very, you know, very angry at Unity, almost as if they just wanted something to be angry at. Right, right. right. I don't understand that behavior. I Even Linus know. has said, you know, that, you know, there's an antagonistic approach, you know, this the community has, and that works against it sometimes. But I this think, is the... I think one of the great things about Linux and free software is that it's attracted people who want to be different and they want to change things. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Like, mm -hmm. that's an amazingly inventive crowd. Right. It makes it a little bit difficult to get what you're asking for, which is one thing that works for everybody, Perfect. right? Because yeah. the very people who will come and be productive in a free software world right. are also people who, who will find fault with somebody else's thing, right? And so here we are. Right.